Hello, Austin. I'd like to thank you for allowing us into your homes for this 32nd episode of Season 2 of the Esoteric Science Roundtable. And it might be obvious to those of you out there that are not visually impaired that I do have two guests today. Jeff Contreras. Hey, how's it going, Austin, Texas? Chris Athanas. Hello, everybody. So I'm really honored to have you guys here because you guys are a lot like a pay-per-view. You're in demand. <laughs> you guys down That's here pretty together. funny. I'm really, really I'm honored to have you guys both on my show. Thanks, and Thanks. you know, Appreciate just it. it's great to just be able to have this forum for us to chat a bit. Yeah. And I want to start by saying thanks to everybody that came out last night to Opal Divines for our monthly third Wednesday metaphysical slash philosophical discussion. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, there was about 30 people there last night. And almost every conversation... you guys there. Every yeah. conversation was, like, very interesting and Actually, it was so like, just br uh, bubbling with conversation that if you wanted to have a sane conversation, you kind of had to duck out and go outside for a little <laughs> while, and then you'd come back in and join the melee. But, yeah, but every really single conversation was very informative yeah I had a great time that was I actually agree really man and that's what's great about those meetings is you get people meeting into the minds of all kinds of people that are actively doing something to kind of help alleviate this whole situation that we're in and try to help enlighten people a bit and provide some solutions that's one of the things that sometimes is sorely lacking is some kind of a direction some kind of a focus on how we can practically do things to alleviate again some of these problems that we're facing that so many of us are so well aware of but if we can start a bit um, with some of the things that are on you guys' minds. Um, Chris, why don't you, if you don't mind, jumping in. Um, the big thing that's been on my on my mind uh, lately is um, forgiveness and the power of forgiveness and how it's not just mm -hmm. for the other person. It's actually for yourself. And um, the one book I really like is this book called Radical Forgiveness. And there's also... Um, there we go. There's also, like, you know, seminars that this guy does and everything, but... Um, it's pretty good. It talks about the energy body and how if you hold things against people, you're actually really trapping energy inside your body and not allowing it to flow properly, which causes all kinds of other problems that um, just keep you stuck in, in the past and don't allow you to live life fully. And this, this book is about how to forgive and the steps you need to take to forgive other people. Uh, for the things that have happened and it's just events they're not personal there's things that happen that you somehow take personally it's just things that happen and the reason why you know one of the reasons why I'm really into the forgiveness cycle is that um, this book talks about how if you want to activate your natural psi energies um, your psychic abilities that you do you know that one of the key elements is to get rid of those negative feelings you have against others um, out of your system and forgiveness is one of the keys and there's other some other keys here but um, uh, like focus intent and pay attention keep a journal keep light company find good teachers seek out solitude spend time in nature be present and aware uh, practice structured meditation um, know yourself good physical exercise uh, and the, the, one of the biggest ones she talks about is, is forgiveness, is, is practicing forgiveness for everyone else um, and, and allowing those things out of your system. And that's been one of my main things lately is uh, about forgiveness and mostly about forgiving myself. Or I was coming back from uh, New Mexico with Tom Thoman and uh, we were listening to the, the Power of Now on CD. Oh, yeah. And a, a lot of what you were saying, it, uh, I remember him think he what that author calls it I forget his name but he calls that the pain body yeah mm. the pain body the pain body how people create this pain body from all their basically you know all the negative emotions and feelings that they have built up over their lifetime yeah. and this pain body becomes like a friend to them and a lot of people be start depending on their pain body mm -hmm. and even though they know they need to make a separation it's one of those things like uh, you know I don't want to cut off my right hand you know mm -hmm. what I mean it's I've had it my whole life and it's always did me right even though I know it's evil I don't want to get rid of it and right. it, it's really difficult and sometimes that, that pain body colors your universe it tells you basically what you what you're ex t entitled to expect from the world which is totally false I mean, in my estimation, my experience so far, the world is, is abundant. It's really giving. It's very forgiving. It has lots of stuff to offer, and it's not limiting in any way. But when we, when we attach to the pain body and attach to not forgiving other people, we limit the world. 
and the world becomes limiting and limited for us. And uh, that's been a really good lesson for me, and that's been a hard one for me to learn also, very hard for me to learn. Right, I would say that also ties in considerably with uh, the whole idea of character armor that, <clears throat> excuse me, that Wilhelm Reich brought out, and as far as if you have something that you are so localized on, these are the things that so-called harden, and those may eventually turn into some sort of a physical disease and some, some sort of a malady as far as where we have the blockage in our body, or it's, um, a constipation could be another term for it as well, as far as just not allowing that free flow of energy and that allowing that you're saying, if we are stuck on a non-forgiving, if we just hold a grudge towards somebody for the rest of our lives for some thing, some transgression, then that will eat us up like a cancer and that's where cancer comes from a lot Actually, of times as well. Uh, I've kind of come to the conclusion that is what cancer is all about. It's holding those those memories and those thought forms and those ideas inside your body, inside your cells in a constrained, held way and not letting it go. And this is another book I've been uh, looking at lately. It's called The Secret of Letting Go. And, you know, this is one of the ways um, that... Uh, Another way to conquer stress and and develop freedom and clear away obstacles out of your life is to uh, let go. And this book, The Secret of Letting Go, really goes through step by step why it's important in a very easy to read way. And the forward is by Desi Arnaz Jr. Oh yeah. Yeah, and he talks about how he had to let go of a lot of stuff from his childhood that affected him and wasn't allowing him to live properly. Yeah, actually quite a few of these child celebrity stars that have found their way into the limelight at a very early age, they do have a lot of psychological issues they have to deal with. So these are good examples of people that can come forward with some real advice for their own situations. Is there a crosstalk? Are we having crosstalk? I'm not sure what's going on, quite frankly. But I might just be hearing it through the wall, maybe. Okay. But anyway, um, go ahead and finish up with what you were saying. Uh, it's just that, you know, it's not just about, you know, letting go and just letting someone else get away with something because actually it's not even about them when you forgive someone else it's not even about them it's about yourself and about allowing you to live a life more uh, more fully and more abundantly um, and to access your natural rights like uh, as a natural as a human being on this planet as your psychic abilities you're allowed to access those things again when you when you when you do practice forgiveness and it's not and it's not easy. It's really hard because no, your ego gets in the way and you think you're better and better than that. And um, and not only that, but I think a lot of people, we're conditioned to want to blame something outside of ourselves right. for all of our troubles. Right. You know, in today's society and, and actually the American culture, unfortunately, or a lot of the Western cultures, they are so get an immediate fix that... that if you're having a problem, something has got to be the blame. Right. And so there's something from outside that they want you to take in order to, to, to make it better. They give you an outside source for your misery, and then they claim something from outside of you can uh, eliminate that right. misery. Right. And I think uh, when, when I was reading one book or listening to someone talk about that blame is mental illness. Mm -hmm. Looking at outside yourself for whatever problems are you're having is a, is a, is a mental illness. And that um, is the ultimate limitation as well. You limit yourself so much by staying locked in blame and the unforgiving attitude that you won't be able to pro progress past that again, that little cancerous thing that, you know, that yeah. the potential for so much uh, disruption to our system. If we can't, allow, again, allow that free flow of expression, then we're going to limit ourselves with what we're able to bring forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in The Secret of Letting Go, there's a questions about self-wholeness that talks about this issue specifically. Mm -hmm. And it talks about, instead of asking yourself, why do these things always happen to me? You learn to ask, what is it inside of me that attracts these painful situations? Right. And I just went through a bunch of stuff like that. And uh, this, this, this really hits me hard. Uh, no, no, another one here is instead of always asking yourself why things had to go this way or be that way, learn to ask why is it the way I feel always determined by external conditions? You know, instead of as always asking yourself how to protect yourself in challenging situations, learn to ask what is it in me that always needs to be defended? Just and these are, these are these are some things you know a different way of looking at life and your life and how you live your life and why things are happening to you and the way they're happening um, that are esoteric <laughs> because you don't necessarily look at, the, you know, society does not train us to look at things this way. 
Yeah. This is we have to we go look through at the a lot exterior, of, outer yeah, things. Yeah, like so everything much. out there is causing right. me to be painful. You know, right. I can't get a job, or that person hurt me, or you know, why is it these things happening? Well, it's because there's something inside you that's allowing it to happen to you and allowing you to. One have thing it happen too, uh, people sometimes you know you might be able to size up other people's problems and see clearly what it is that's giving this person difficulty, and they're like. How can you not see what your difficulty and your dilemma is? You know, right. it's very obvious to me, right. and that is the thing that it's like a 800-pound gorilla on our shoulders that yeah. we can't a lot of times realize our own uh, inadequacies and deficiencies, I tell you. and we hold on to that sick little friend like guys were discussing earlier. Yeah, you know, and um, not considering, not well, considering our problems. Well, why do you think it is we're blind to our own? I think it's pride. The, um, sometimes um, the ego has a lot to do with pride it. We just ego. want to think that we know so much or you know? we're in control of our own situation exactly and even though even though you might see the train wreck coming and so you grab a couple of books and you know you read about it and you understand the situation and you think okay I know the train wreck is coming and I prepared for it mm -hmm. by reading all these different you know theories of how to handle this situation mm -hmm. so yet when it happens and it hurts and it starts to be painful you forget all of that other stuff because when it comes down to it, it's just like when you're, when you're playing sports. You don't have time to think about anything. It's your natural reaction. Mm -hmm. And unless you've really been exposed to pain and let yourself really feel that pain several times and know and understand how to deal with it when it happens to you immediately, then you're always going to fall back to those uh, survival type instincts, which is basically just means me, 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 to make sure that you're okay. And then, and only then, once your me, me, me has determined that you're safe, then you can start going, oh, now I see, now I understand. It's just like the book says, you know, I did this, 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 and this. And, then, and only then, really, once you're assured of your own safety, that's when you can start to really examine the situation. But I think it's also going to come to the experiential thing as well. You know, you can prepare and learn theory all week long, but when it comes down to living life, it really boils down to living life. And exactly. You have to go through and experience. And that's what it is uh, so much for all of these things that are uh, labeled esoteric or inner or hidden, is that you do have to have some sort of experience and be able to, to size it up subject subjectively in your own life. If you try to sit here, if we had the, the atheist guys sit here right now and we try to explain to them about some of these things, if they don't have some kind of an, oh, their own inner experience, to identify with what we're describing, then they'll just think that, you know, they're talking fanciful ideological right. ideas and there's nothing really practical with where, from where they're coming. Right. Uh, but really, it has to boil down to experience, what you experience and express through your own life. And then you can see and look back through history and see all the other great lives that That's have gone true. through similar things. You know, I really thought before these things happened to me mm -hmm. uh, that I was actually above a lot of this stuff. The pride and the ego. You know, Kick I thought, in, I thought you know, <laughs> Why are these people having such these such difficulties in these things? You know, it's just so simple. You know, it's such so easy to see what the problems are, until it hit me, mm -hmm. and now I have a lot more compassion for people and empathy for people when they're going through stuff, and because, you know, I thought I was above it. I thought my mental, my mental self, my mental uh, body uh, was able to totally compensate for any lot lack in my emotional body and I know now that that's not possible that um, any part of your psyche that's that is neglected and not looked after and not treated properly will eventually take over and get its needs met however however it, however it needs to happen exactly um, and it can't and, be denied and you know just when you were saying that all I could keep thinking of was you know the disgruntled postal worker dudes <laughs> okay, you know what I mean man. They, I don't know why they really wig out, but obviously <laughs> something in their life is, you know, building up and pressuring, and they're ignoring it, right. and they're just ignoring it. Like if somebody wants it, and it doesn't even have to be your emotional body. It can be your, your physical body as right. well. Right. You can start to ignore your physical body and think, well, you know, just because I'm working my uh, mental body and my spiritual body that everything's going to be okay. Right. But it's not. You have to make sure and take care of all of your bodies. Right. Absolutely. Right. And it seems to be sequential. You have to have the physical body in order to take care of the emotional body in order to take care of the mental body, which then allows you to get access to the spiritual body. Exactly. And a lot of people seem to want to skip that. They want to skip the emotions or skip the mental body. I know I was trying to skip my emotional body. 
Absolutely. Because you're such a mental, analytical right. person right. that you're predisposed to that way of thinking. Right. And I had done it for to... so long successfully True. that I thought I could keep going. Right, And right. like forever. And, yeah. and, and my, that was a major mistake. In my experiences and through my growing, all, what I've come to learn is I t completely n neglect the intellectual body quite a bit. I feed the emotional body, I try to take care of the physical body, and I've been working on the spiritual body, but really, the intellectual body, sometimes I just don't feel like I have time for it. I mean, I might read all the time, and you know, when I'm not reading books, I'm spending time on the inter internet thinking I'm learning, but I don't know, sometimes to me it just seems that I don't learn what I'm reading, you know what I mean? I'm just reading it and getting the information, but I'm not really learning from it or exercising my intellectual body. Or you're not looking at the material that you really need to have your other bodies be aligned properly. You know? Exactly. And not integrating that stuff in Yeah, properly. instilling it as a, some kind of you know. thing inherent in you. You know what I mean? you got to internalize what you read and make practical, again, as we say, practical application, experiential use out of whatever it may be to have some expression outward. Yeah. Definitely. That's, I mean, and I, it's so amazing how you're blind to these things until they come up and take you over. They blindside you. Blindsided, definitely. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I'm yeah. just uh, amazed at the process that, you know, there is blindsided. <laughs> 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 he was talking about this book about Planet X, Blindsided, the Earth Changes, and it's called Blindsided. Um, just a weird synchronicity. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> but uh, I'm just amazed. Um, and one of the other things I've learned through this process is that your um, your mind gives you exactly what you want. And this book right here, uh, The Amazing Laws of Cosmic Mind Power, talk about how to uh, mm. how to download into your into your subconscious mind positive and beneficial um, thought patterns that will help you move out of your negative patterns. Which it seems to be either our culture or our society or the way things are in this world right now, we naturally have a tendency, which I don't think is natural, I think it's we have a tendency to go to the negative parts mm -hmm. and to think things are small, negative, and limiting, when I know for a fact that they're not. Mm -hmm. And I've, ex I've established that in my life on uh, many occasions that they're not. They're, our, our life is not limited, it's not small, it's abundant and unlimited. And I'm not, do you, have a, do you have any ideas about why we always go to the negative? I know we're set up not to do that. Though. Well, I think it's almost, you know, to, just to offer a different perspective, it's like the difference between a limiting, something limiting what we are, you know, our mind is a limiting mind. It's a mm -hmm. finite entity. We're a finite being. And mm -hmm. so just from that perspective, we tend to think of things in a finite way. Right. And it's really, that's, that's one of the main, or I think, one of the best benefits of transcendental meditation. The transcendentalists, they really go out of their way in order to look at things from the experience of the infinite. Yeah. And that way that w they can realize the abundance that you're talking but about and see that everything is holographic and fractal yeah, and that everything absolutely. exists and is a com it's going exponentially. Right, big time. Big time. Yeah. But what are we taught though? What are we taught to ritualize, believe, express? We're not taught critical thinking skills. We're not taught abstract thinking. We're taught more just, you know, Go, they, they start to teach you how to write a check when you're like a little kid in school. I remember that, you know, and they try to get you just locked into, like you say, this limited, finite expression, and they want you to, you know, perhaps go to college and then get the job and then maybe perhaps raise a family and then die, and that's your time, you know what I mean? That's what we've, our perception is through what we've been indoctrinated with and ingrained into us for so, so long. You know, we have to break those ritual, ritualized, habitual patterns. Our reptile mind can be plagued and can be you know, harped upon by so many things, right. you know what I mean? I'm stimulated to be, to think that we actually are separate entities. When I know for right. a fact that we're not, we're very unified. I mean, just the fact that I can speak to you and have these thought patterns come into your brains, even somewhat similar to mine, tells me that we are so, <laughs> we are so connected together yeah. that it's, you know, it's hard to deny that we are separate. But, you know, I, for a long time, I thought we were completely separate beings, that we were all separate entities, that we're all individual little boxes that have no idea about what each other are. And that was when I was, when I was going through my atheist phase. Right. And um, I've since had experiences and um, 
scientific proof that shows me that that's not the case at all. all right, uh, we're all right. completely connected. Mm -hmm. I just wonder why, why it is that, you know, n now that I know that, and I know that there's no other way to explain all the things that have happened in my life, mm -hmm. why we continue to think that we're limited entities, limited small, small entities. And, and, and I know, it's, go ahead. Uh, I don't know, you know, I was, I was sitting there trying to think about why that is and you know I was think, trying to think what it was in me that to where I finally just got over that hurdle and you know it's not that at all though it's not that I've gotten over the hurdle it's just that I can put myself there and I'm there a lot of the time but I realize I'm not there all the time and I always come back onto this side mm -hmm. even though I know and I recognize that there is the infinite and the abundance you always get pulled back down into the finite and the material and it comes and goes in cycles yeah, and the thing it. is to just when you're when you're hitting it really well and you're really in touch or connected with that experience mm -hmm. Carry that over into the downtime. Right, That's the key. you have to That's carry hard. that experience That's over into the downtime. That's the hard part. That is very hard. And and also, too, with us being limited, too, it's it's partially, as far as I would say, karmic. It's very karmic that we put on this limited expression, we put on this body of limitation to experience certain things, and That's certain true. people have to experience the most basic, fundamental aspects of living to conquer those which would for them would be monumental hurdles and, and, and uh, mountains to to uh, to accomplish but it's you know it takes those initial steps like you're saying and we all you know are at our various levels of understanding and growth and that sort of thing and it's not necessarily that one person is this much better or higher it's just that we all are climbing a ladder some have taken more have taken better advantage of their time and have put it to more constructive use and so therefore they are making strides on this ladder of evolution whereas others stay back and they're more focused on maybe their own self and their own limited situation and until you know the incrementally inc incrementally things come into their perception that they can build from they'll stay locked into those limiting situations yeah. well what I think one of the main problems is that there's no specific set of tools that people can actually just use. It's not like you can go to the store and say, "Oh, I need, I need a, I need the tool that helps me work on my emotional self." And you know, there's nothing like that. And even though there are people that have mastered that and actually have nurtured themselves, all of their bodies, and become more complete, and mm -hmm. even though they have left behind their steps, how they did it, mm -hmm. if a person hasn't had that guru's experiences, right. his teachings and his methods may not work for that person or yeah, for exactly. everybody. Right. And those experiences are just simply what the what the mystery schools would call initiation. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those and because I read, I read I was reading a book about how people can automatically initiate through a lot of what the what the mystery schools are talking about by just going through daily life. And I oh, read this book and completely. I saw a lot of the things I'd already gone through. Yes. Chris. And <laughs> it also frightened me because it kind of let me know there were some things I was reading I didn't understand. And I was going, what is this talking about? That I knew at some point I would know. Right. And that I would have to go through even more initiations yes. of li li through going through life yes. to, to have this uh, higher level of awareness. Because there's something that happened inside me that made me say, okay, I need to take care of these things. But that has, that's how it has to be with every single person, as you're saying. The ready set of tools, I think the tools are available for everyone that needs them, but it f kind of falls along the lines of, like in the Bible, to ask, the seek, and the knock that whole thing, ask basically, that you have to ask and there has to be that point of motivation and understanding for you to get to the point where you're going to ask for something like a spiritual gift as opposed to, oh, I can't pay my rent, I need money. You know, right. thinking in the very basic terms instead of thinking, you know, other ways in a more spiritual realm, how they could bring the financial into their lives and, and thinking on that larger scale. But that something has to activate them like you're saying. And, and, the, and the spiritual realm, a lot. I, whenever I hear somebody talk about the spiritual realm, mm -hmm. it's sort of like, you know, well, you know, you're asking some uh, Santa mm. for a gift. And in fact, I've come to the conclusion that's not really the, what the spiritual realm for me means. It means that there are laws that are not obvious, that are hit, somewhat hidden, True. meaning that they're not obvious, they're not clear just by looking day-to-day -day operations on the surface of things, mm -hmm. that you can get access to that will provide you the insight necessary to get all of your needs met. And that's one of the books I was reading here called uh, Angel Energy. And it talks about the different, oh, let's 
Gotta a little bit that. of a blue book there. It's a blue Angel book. Angel Energy. Angel Energy. And it talks about uh, that these 22 angels are the centers of living energy that provide us with all we need to sustain us on our journey through life. And there are things like how to awaken to higher consciousness, how to heal the past, how to communicate uh, with angels, awake and dreaming, find your life, right livelihood, how to gain confidence. And it talks about all these different angels, which, you know, the, he uses the word angels, which, you know, the, they, they sort of are entities among, of, of themselves, but they're basically ideas, thought forms, ways of thinking about the world, things that you put, ways of thinking about things that bring you insight so you can solve the problems on your own in this world, in this material world, and then which then reflect back up to the other worlds, the, the emotional worlds, the mental worlds, and the spiritual worlds. So you basically draw them down, uh, these ideas, these concepts um, that allow you to to uh, get your needs met. Like, um, here's some other ones here. Uh, well, let me see, let's see. Let me give you some names of, the, of these angels. Um, like there's angels of courage, angels of... Um, I'm sure healing. And all healing and truth and, and forgiveness and uh, ways of getting your needs, you know, all your needs met that you might have in, in, in the world. Like, I don't have the list of them, darn it. But this book really opened me up to what, what some of the more ancient traditions were talking about when they're talking about angels. It's just concepts and ideas and bundles that once you link into them, open up a whole different world of understanding about how to get, how to get needs met. Jeff, speak about your understanding of that, communing with those embodied energies and that exchange of force and energy that's related to what some people would term angels. Well, I think what a lot of people would th uh, most people today will call angels the archetypes. You right. know what the I mean? Right. Definitely, right. you know, things that exist within the collective consciousness that are stable, that aren't dynamic, they don't really change. These are things that you can count on, these archetypes. And these archetypes, most of them have, are created by humans. Are, you know, we create our own archetypes, and we're building and destroying our types, archetypes all the time, collectively as a race, the, the human race. And over time, these archetypes have developed just because so many different people have gone through that situation, and this experience is now ingrained into the collective psyche of the human race. Right. That means at any time, you can, even though you haven't experienced these things, you can connect with the archetype and draw from the experience. And right. that's how you would get the information from the angels. Right. You know? And throughout the ages, they have, you know, different people have talked about this. Uh, the ma magicians of old used to be the only psychologists there were. Yeah, you yeah, know, the church, the church does not have a monopoly on spirituality. No. They never have and they never will. It's not something that you can bottle up and sell. It's something you have to learn and earn. Right, that's very Good true. And here's some of the names of these angels. The angel of unconditional love and freedom. Uh, the angel of illusion and reality, hmm. and like he, they even have the the um, the, the archetypes <laughs> of you know that the, that some of the more ancient re religions and mystical re um, um, traditions. traditions have come through. Like the angel of illusion and reality uh, correlates to Hermes and Mercury, and also on the tarot it's the magician, hmm. the angel of creative wisdom, angel of abundance. Uh, angel of power and authority, an angel of spiritual understanding, angel of loving relationships. These are mm -hmm. these are energies and concepts, and for lack of a better word, seems to be living entities within ourselves that we can come in contact with, that allow us to solve our problems in the in a way that's not just up for ourselves, but for everybody else around us. And it's, it's a win-win situation. That's what that's really what the angels are into, and these and these concepts are into win-win situations where no one is the victim that everyone gains from their, their accessing their, their ideas and their energies and becoming more, more, more in tune with, with these things. And this, this book really helped me understand a lot more of, of those concepts in a very concrete, very concrete turn. John Randolph Price is, he's, I believe, a really excellent author, has gone through some really amazing experiences on his own. Uh, later on in his life that gave him very interesting and useful insights into 
how these things can be accessed for us on our day-to-day -day life. And that's what I'm interested in. How can we access this stuff on our day-to-day -day life and not put it out there in some other realm that we can use right here, right now to solve the problems that we have, that we all have. And go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm oh, no, rambling. No. No, okay. <laughs> I would just say that the angels are tied, you know, we have a parallel evolution with the Davis so-called Eastern term and the angel evolution. There's a parallel between that evolution and our human evolution that plays inter interchanges and exchanges. Uh, but also outside of that, that our human organ, the heart, and its etheric counterpart and its, you know, additional counterparts that are re more refined. Again, we talk about emotional, mental bodies, all that. We have a, you can term it a mental heart, if you will, and that the heart, the heart is multidimensional, multifaceted, and that is the, the dense physical organ that allows us to tap in and tie into this allowing, this being open-hearted, open-minded, and being allowing and being, again, forgiving, as you were saying earlier, and to understand that, you know, rather than just bag on somebody for whatever they're doing, you know, you understand that, hey, that's what they need to go through, that's their situation, be respectful of that, be allowing of their situation, and, you know, give them some uh, love and light and send them on their way with a blessing. That's it, the best you can do. And it's easier to connect with the empathy if you've gone through that initiation yourself or that, that, that sequence true. of events that, that got you there. Cause you know, I but was very aloof. True, and you know, that, that is us. the main benefit of group therapy. It really is. You know, the people get together that have experienced the same or very similar tragic emotional events, mm -hmm. and that really helps people overcome that traumatic event. Doesn't feel like you're the first person exactly. to come through. And that Aquarian exactly. type of thinking. And that really helps in letting the ego understand that, you know, it was, this is very okay. You know, yeah, I right. am very human. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. And yeah. a lot, you know, one of the banes, I think, of magic in general and is that, you know, you have to subdue the ego or destroy or demolish the ego. No. See, even the East, in the Eastern system, I think that's even more so a stereotype. Right. But, you know, you need your ego. You can't do anything without your ego. You have to nurture your ego. Your ego sometimes is just like your subconscious. It, it's young. And you have grown up. Your subconscious it's stays young. young. Yeah. <laughs> Your ego stays young because you never take the time to develop these things. And it really is a process. It takes time and work and energy. And that's why you don't see enlightened people walking around all over the place. Or maybe they are walking all over the place and you just we're don't see them because to it. we're not seeing it in the right light. I think... You know, a lot of grandparents are very enlightened. That's true. That's, I try to keep that Without humble perspective doubt. because you never know the bum filtering, you know, sifting through the trash heap, you know, where, what is his experience, where has he come from, who is he in actuality? He may not be that bum that you're right. picturing in your mind. So right. to try to pay respect and have that, again, that heart approach to all living entities is what's going to get us that sympathetic or empathetic yeah. exchange that allows us to commiserate, understand, and put ourselves in somebody else's shoes, basically. Yeah. Certainly, if we've had that experience ourselves, we can grow from it and understand, but um, not necessarily. Humans could not have gotten together in a group formation and had a group psychological outpouring thousands of years ago because we were not evolved to that point where the mental faculties were able to you know, psychology and that sort of thing was pretty much relegated to the mystery schools. It wasn't right. really out so much for everybody's use because, again, our mental faculties have evolved over time, and that's why these things are only now in the 20th century, 19th century and 20th century, really coming into the fore as far as this psychological uh, groups and, and counseling with other people that have had a similar experience. Maybe they've lost a child or something like that so and do they you, come together. Do you think this hyper speed up of information in our information culture has forced us into a place where because we you know, have access now to nuclear weapons and can totally annihilate ourselves um, many times over, do you think that there's been this information explosion that's caused us to force us to have men the mental ability to understand our emotional selves in order to get access to the spiritual realm? That there's been like this, there's there some, been some group things. of people have, have forced this onto us so we can right. adjust our mental abilities and our emotional abilities so we can get in touch with with some of the things that are really going on here so we don't destroy ourselves. No, we have been locked in and limited and there are definitely programs that have gone on for a long time to keep us within that rigid, you know, limited perception, that total vision. 
And I do think that the sign of the time, there are a lot of things that are coming together in time and space right now to allow for this upsurge, this, this enhancement and this emphasis upon maybe the more spiritual and the more metaphysical in light of the dense physical. Uh, this growth, this outpouring, this expression. So many people are crying out, you know, for something in their lives and they're trying to put a finger on it. What is this that I need in my life to fulfill me? And more and more people are not getting it through material things. They're not finding it through the church. They're not finding it through material means. They're not finding it through relationships a lot of times. And these are the things that they have to look inside and say, man, know thyself and come from that point of understanding to become the whole total person and for us to be a race entirely, a globe actually, of living lighted links of understanding and you know, spiritual expression, creative activity. It's really up to us, but uh, yes, it is exploding exponentially. And many things are the catalyst and the, just, you know, the uh, progenitors of that unfolding. There's so many things going on right now we could point a finger at. We'd have to do like a three-part show to really hone down all that stuff. Not only that, I think it's kind of like, you know, when you make a, collect a connection to the collective unconsciousness, what, uh, it's kind of like, you know, the, the straws they used to use you know, we're small straws. This is the kind of connection you make. That's the kind of connection you used to make. But now, with all this information explosion, when you make the connection, you're using one of those big jumbo straws that you drink that Thai tea with, <laughs> you know, with the tapioca balls down in the bottom, those huge straws. Those are the straws you're making the connection with. And, yeah. and when you make a connection like that, ready or not, yeah. here comes the information. Boy, and a lot it. of times, it's, it blows your fuse. And It'll wash when, the spider out. Exactly. You know, you know <laughs> when, when your fuse is blown like that, I mean, it takes a long time before you can actually reset or reprogram and have your neur neurons or your brain know where to start sorting all this information properly. Hmm. Okay, any final comments? Let's start touching that box. Okay, sure. Um, <laughs> I guess the, the number one thing... Uh, is you know we're talking a lot about these negative emotional types of things. I just want to keep bring up uh, a book that really helped me understand a little bit more about the creative mind and success. It's called The Creative Mind and Success by Ernest Holmes, and this is a guy that did a a work called The Science of Mind that talks about how to engage your mental mental facilities in order to understand more about the spiritual process that's going on. And for some for some people like me, which is I'm a logical left brain kind of uh, uh, kind of guy who likes to, you know, think about things in a very logical, progressive, very, m m I don't need to know it concretely, understand what they're talking about. Ernest Holmes really put it into perspective, a lot of things into perspective for me about the spiritual world and how you can access those things by, um, the main thing this book's about is uh, like attracts like. So if you want to become, become like something, you have to become like it. You have to change your thought processes and change the way you think about things in order to become that thing that you want to become. And this, this book really, uh, really kind of blended the Eastern and Western traditions together for me to make it a lot more understandable. That's Cool. And he, uh, Ernest Holmes is considered one of the, if not the original self-help author. Yeah, he's he pretty kick-ass. I mean, that, that book is from the early part of the century, like 1910. Right, exactly. That's why he's pretty ahead, of, pretty ahead of the game back then for, with that. Uh, and it's still very also. readable. Jeff, please, if you don't Okay, mind. I'll try to get in 10 calls. So that just means two minutes each, y'all. <laughs> Line three, you're on the air. Chris, do you have this? Turn Hello? Yeah, yes, that's, that's you. you. Oh, hey, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Great. I was just wondering, uh, where are you guys from exactly? South Austin. Um, I'm from planet Earth, I guess. I was, I was born in Maine. All right. I'm straight out of Cameron, but I was born in uh, Temple, Texas. Cool. Um, I've been watching your, show, your guys' show for like a couple of weeks. I've seen the guy on the left uh, a couple of times on. I have no clue what you guys are talking about. That's good. You guys are babbling on for a while, and I've seriously been watching it for like, you know, 15, 20 minutes sometimes. No idea what, what are you guys talking about. That's good. You're not ready for it, but you will be at some point, and hopefully this will sink in. Ready for what, you. though? That's what I'm trying to find out. When, what does when, this have to when, do with precipitation? Things, yeah, I you, haven't even heard you mention that. When things happen to you in your life that you can't handle or understand why they're happening, then you'll get it. <laughs> But, you know, you are taking the time to view and you are trying to digest what we're trying to bring out here. So why is it that you're, you know, taking 15 minutes or 20 minutes to try to understand? I mean, there must be some reason for you to... Because I see no real logical connection to anything you say. It's just like, I think I understand the English language pretty well, but mm -hmm. you guys are talking and I'm like, what? 
it's that didn't make any it's sense. Self-help in general. I mean, just to put it in a nutshell, this well, is today is a kind of self-help thing. You when know? things happen to you in your life that you don't fully understand and have no reference for, where do you go for help? How do you find out? How do you, how do you, how do well, you... Well, if it's something I don't know, then I obviously can't make a decision on that. Well, what happens when you have to make a decision? When you have to make a decision, when you have to be in the moment... Pretty, that's a pretty broad question. Well, Exactly. It's a pretty life broad a problem. Broad life. <laughs> so, so well, give me a specific question, and maybe I can answer that. Let's one. say you have some kind of a trauma. Let's say you lose a loved one, a very near, dear person to you, okay. and you are just wrought with grief. How do you proceed? Do you go inward, or do you find a priest? Do you find a loved one? How do you proceed? Uh, in okay, life? so you guys are talking about some sort of like spiritual or personal thing. In a nutshell, yes. Stuff that happens. To is there is there something you call this? Esoteric science. I call it life. Life. You Thank know. you very much for your call. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, thanks. Line two. You're uh, here. Hi. Hello. Um, yeah, I got two quick questions. This has been a great show, by the way. Uh, Chris, what mystery school book were you talking about? And uh, Jeff, what day does that 10 uh, Gateway Mind calendar day start? Okay. Tomorrow. Yeah, it starts tomorrow. 10 straight days of galactic activation portal. Weird. And uh, what was that book? Um, there's, I, all these books, you know, have touch on all the different mystery religions I've ever seen. But you were talking about the one that's, uh, Rocky's initiation through life oh, experience. Oh, this is, this one's called Success in Mind, uh, Success, my, the Creative Mind and Success is called Science of Mind, Ernest Holmes. And that's the one that's about initiation through experience? Um, well, they all, all the mystery schools talk about that, initiation through different types of experiences. But That's, you said like one book specifically referenced like uh, certain experiences, I believe? Uh, well, there's there's the your sixth sense. I talked about that one. Mm. It's not one of these. Not uh, one of those? Angel Energy. No, it was like mm. another book. Okay, well, uh, thank you. I can't remember. Hey, right. thanks for watching. I appreciate hey, it. One Bye. thing, though, I mean, there are books specifically on initiation if you want to learn about the science of initiation and those I think Oh, that things. book. I, I think Franz remember. Barden has a book called Initiation. Yeah. There's Initiation, that's, Human and Solar by Alice Bailey. Yeah, um, that's a good one. There's uh, books about the uh, Egyptian Barton, Initiation. initiation. That's, That's what it one. is. Franz Barton, yeah, Franz Barton. Initiation into Hermetics. And there's one called like Self Initiation or Initiation from Life or I can't remember the name of the Rudolf title. Steiner. Rudolf Steiner talks Rudolf Steiner about has it too. Initiation books exactly. Yeah, it talks about how regular life circumstances will initiate you into what the what the mystery traditions were trying to do. And you know that the, the mystery do. school tradition all they did was they they were keen observers of human nature and they saw what experienced help people grow and then what they would do is they would put you in a controlled environment and expose you to these experiences Simulate. and basically force you to grow and learn. Yeah, right. so when they actually when mm -hmm. that situation would come up in your life, you'd have some kind of context to then handle this problem that came up in your life. But it's true. Which it is, is very like, effective. You're like a hothouse flower, man. They've got you just boom, you know what I mean? It's exactly. Like the way on you and concentrate things. Right. Line one, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, dudes? Great show, by the way, man. Man, I've been waiting so long for a show with all three of you guys get together at the same time, man, because, you know, I've been, I watch Access a lot, and, man, I really get a lot out of your shows. I mean, you, your topics really make me focus on different aspects in my life. And I noticed when Chris, when they got close, when they focused in on you, that bracelet, is that one of those, like, anti-stress uh, or something? Did that, does that actually work? And It's a placebo. Oh, okay. And you were talking about how you've realized that we're all connected. Very much. Like, you know, we're all connected in a lot different, you know, in a lot different ways, a lot of aspects. But, you know, we need to get connected in different aspects, such as... <laughs> <laughs> we're waiting for you, neighbor. Very good caller, it's though, not man. a show without him. It's does, not a show without him. You do watch every show. I'll give you credit for that, without a doubt. But you are the biggest Access live show is, fan that I'm aware of. He's my biggest fan, that's for sure. You followed me around. Line three, you're on the air. The air. Hello? Yes. That's you. Yeah, um, oh, that was great. I'm sorry. I was just, I was entranced by that. Uh, hey, I was wondering if uh, any of y'all have read Prometheus Rising by yes. Robert Anton Wilson? Absolutely. Yeah. Really? Okay. As a matter um, of fact, good book. a funny little sad anecdote about Robert Anton Wilson. I was going to have him on my show. Really? Yes, huh. but September the 11th happened, right. yeah. and they canceled all the flights, and I, ha I was going to have him on my show not... Two de not September the 13th, but the 20th. Really? Yes. Damn, that's but, interesting. But he was going to come down for the uh, 
one of Smiles' UFO conferences. Right, that had to be canceled. Also. Yes. Right, right, and right. man, if it wasn't for that, we would have had him on the show, and it would have been one of the best shows I've ever done, I think. Oh, I would have been watching. Even Someday, though, you never know, hey. Yeah. I saw an interview with him that um, Hadley, did, right? Hadley went out yeah. and did it. And he wasn't as, you know, I think he's getting old. Yeah, I think he's, he's uh, actually sick right now, too. Well, so. he's been confined to a wheelchair for the past few years. Yeah, yeah he's not doing so well. Yeah. But his books really rock. And they his did. tapes that he did earlier on really are quite insightful, funny, and uh, yeah, really well done. that's what I like about it. Yeah. Um, well, I've, I've enjoyed watching each of your shows. Thanks. And uh, thanks. Hey, thank you. Thank All righty. Appreciate it. Have a nice evening. Line two, you're on the air. Hi, how y'all doing? Good. It's Arthur. Um, Jeff, I wanted to ask you a question. The show you did, I was taping two things at once, and my VCR tape kicked out, and I'd only got about five minutes of your show last this last Tuesday. Uh -huh. Do you know when that might be re-airing? The show I did just on Tuesday? Yeah, Probably I know. never. Probably never. Probably never. <laughs> but what, this is what I can do for you. You know, if you email me or, you know, call my vo voicemail and come to the meeting, but you call me a couple days before the meeting and say, hey, I want a tape of such and such a show, right. I'll bring it to the meeting. Okay. You know what I mean? And, uh, Chris, it's good to see you, man. Thank you, sir. It's real good to see you. Yeah, I want to tell you, I, I wish you'd yeah. put your show back on, man. You you give, like, a the technical, you know, sometimes about the computers and a little bit different things than everybody else talks about. Completely. And, uh, it's real enlightening. I, I, I really miss you, man. Miss your show. Miss everything. All right, good to see you back. Hey, appreciate Thank your call, but that's what we're Thanks, trying to Arthur. do because we're gonna we're trying to get this guy's feet wet so that he can jump back in next fall season. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing here. another another show in October. I, I probably think you will. should think very strongly about probably. it, man. With your new growth and your new experiences, you yeah, can new speak about. <laughs> <laughs> new for you. My <laughs> one, you're on the air. Well, I love to talk about new stuff and and old stuff, and one of the oldest stuff is space time travel, and what is relative and what if time slowed down and we all looked at each other in the eye, would we still be seeing the same brain matter or we all have the same brain matter? And out of all the galaxies that are out there, if we could get on a ship and travel there, would our brain matter still be the same looking, looking the guy in the eye the, the same way? You know, not only that, but, you know, should, should we uh, fund NASA and, to get astronauts and, and monkeys and little g girls and squirrels and everybody else in, into space and to get them out of this planet because this is like the wretched soul of the demon uh, monkey black soul in the, in, in the lighter years. So what do you got to say about that? Pretty intense. Put that guy on hold for a second, maybe, or what have you. Okay. But uh, I would just say quickly that you cannot reach that condition in a physical body. You would have to just be consciousness, and there would have to be merged consciousness. And so you would just perceive, as opposed to visually see with your physical eyes anything, it would just have to be a merging of consciousness. And when we get to a higher evolved condition, uh, we would find that there is a merging together of consciousness and we would blend and understand intuitively a collective, if you will, a collective consciousness or what have you. As far as funding NASA and this dog and pony show that they call the space program, the space shuttle, all that, that is a dog and pony show for the public so that they can use their anti-gravity devices behind the scenes to actually do a lot of things. And a lot of the UFOs that people see are actually military craft more yeah. so than they are extra people. cosmic uh, visitors to this planet. Although there are extra cosmic visitors to this planet, I believe. Yeah, extra dimensional, extra cosmic. Extra dimensional. And, I, and not to be, I think this guy is, I think is being a little facetious, but. Um, I thought it was a great question. <laughs> I think he's just being a little silly about the way he's asking it. But uh, I think what we'll find here on this planet is very similar to what we'll find on any other planet. Yeah. Life and I universal. think the answers to all your questions are buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> Line three, you're on the air. Hello? Yeah. That's you. Hey, I can't believe I got through. You have a question or comment? Yes, I wanted to talk about those first three or four books. You Could you just tell me one more time about those three books? Uh, Radical Forgiveness? That's it. One, that's one. Radical Forgiveness is about uh, what why why you need to forgive people and what the power that you will gain by forgiving people and forgiving situations and forgiving yourself what that will gain uh, for you in your life as far as your health and your emotional well-being and your mental well-being and being able to live a much more wholesome life 
Good start. That's yeah. a good start. That's a good one. And the, your sixth sense talks, talks okay, about... Okay, I got that one. And then the one about the angels. Angel and what was the, what was the other one? Angel energy. Uh, the secret of letting go. That's it. Yeah, this one is also quite good and talks about the some uh, um, methods and, and exercises to get you to understand why forgiving people and letting things go is a very healthy and it's our birthright in order to live the most healthy, fulfilled life we can uh, here. To free ourselves. On this planet, on this beautiful planet. Right, exactly. All right, here's my comment. You guys, this was awesome what you were talking about. People live their lives and they never can figure out what it is. Religion's not fulfilling them. Um, relationships aren't fulfilling them. That you have to look deep into yourself and you, you touched on it and you're all very young and insightful guys. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. Thank God you bless. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very much. I appreciate Bye. That. All right. Line two, you're on the air. Hello, boy. That, that question is right up my alley. It's amazing. Okay. Let's file this one under coincidence or divine intervention. All of the above. But there are you're walking down the street, and you're thinking about your friend in New Mexico and the deserts and how beautiful it is. You turn the corner, and there's a car with a license plate from New Mexico. It just hits you right in the face, right? And then... You're walking a little bit further, and then you wonder when those two guys are going to apologize to the family of the, the, the girls that were killed at the yogurt shop, when you guys are going to face up and say, I'm sorry you put that show on the air, that it wasn't true, that you know it wasn't true, and yet you still will not apologize. Dude, you that, bloodthirsty you need, that's something bastards. you need to let go of, man. You bloodthirsty. You know, that's something you need to let go of. And, you know, whatever, you know. Call my show and bug me about it. Everybody, don't, don't bug Corey about it. Everybody okay? has their own opinions about all that stuff, and you know, by holding on to that, I think you just, you know, it's everyone's got their own opinion, right? But I do not apologize for that show. I don't apologize for any of my shows, and I never will apologize for any of my shows. Me neither, Skeeter. I'm the Sounds same like some thing. some forgiveness needs to be going on. So, line one, you're on the air. Whoa, I don't know what that was all about. But <laughs> That's some history there. That's some history. <laughs> That's a good slide in there, dude. Way to, way to slide in there. Line three, you're on the air. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. Good to see you back, Chris. Thank you. Um, I just got a book, and uh, I think I, I had seen an interview on one of your reality expander shows. Uh, with a, He sounded like a Russian uh, physicist. And he discussed a book called The Cosmic Conspiracy. Yeah, and Dale. And uh, so I ordered it off his website and just got it in today. I was just kind of flipping through it. Wondered what uh, your thoughts were on that particular book. I think that guy's pretty darn insightful. The first time I heard him, I thought he was a complete kook and total weirdo. But now that I've re researched more of his material and that material in particular, I think he's right on target about um, a lot of that, a lot of that's what's going on behind the scenes. And it's also, even if it's not what's going on, it's definitely a good way to think about things and to see things, I think, and understand more about what's going on, that there are powerful forces at work, but there's even more powerful ones that are controlling them. Good point, that's true. Cool, uh, Stan thanks Bale, a lot. He's from Texas, so I give him props right there. Uh, and he's one of the, that book, Cosmic Conspiracy, kind of is, to me, I put it in parallel, kind of sort of with, uh, Behold a Pale Horse, William Cooper, because those came out around similar times and they were very groundbreaking and real thick, comprehensive books that really exposed a lot of the so-called Illuminati and New World Order activity that was going on behind the scenes, tying it to secret societies, the Fed, and all of this, you know, trying to get the whole unified picture on the whole thing. And I thought that was pretty interesting for those guys to bring that out. Okay, so we only got a couple minutes left, so line two, you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hi, um, I have a question. You guys are talking about mystery religion. Are you guys talking about mystery Babylon religions or there's Kabbalah different, and stuff like that? There's lots of different schools. Right. I mean, and there because and to me that sounds more uh, like Luciferianism. That's that, that's one school of it, but you know, your life is a mystery school. You well, know, to as, me, the, as you the go, answer to the mystery go, is Yahweh and Yeshua. As you go through well, life, well, that's the way you understand it. Right. And you know, does that make you more right to you know put your understanding and impose it on others? No, but y'all seem that y'all are pretty bright, and it seems that y'all are getting conned really? into well, that's, worshiping That's just the way you Luther. understand it. You know what I mean? And we don't have enough time to really get into yeah, it. Yeah, so, we're not encouraging anybody to worship anything. Line guy. one. Worship yourself. You're on the air. Hey, um, I was wondering if you guys could touch again on 
the you, I think there was some kind of funky cycle we were going to go into over the next ten days. Tied into oh. the Mayan calendar. Yeah, it's not it's not really a funky cycle. What it is is for the next yeah, it's an opportunity for the next ten days in the Mayan calendar. Basically, you're going to have an opportunity to make a connection with the collective consciousness. You can pick any archetypes that you want, but the opportunity is there. Uh, the Mayans, they were great natural scientists and they understood the way the cycles worked. And they, their calendar has built in indicators which let you know what days are excellent days in which to make a connection with the collective consciousness. Now, whatever you want to call it, these are great days to pray. If you just want to pray for the next 10 days, your prayers will have mm, more force. Right. I think so, any project you start exactly. it will have emphasis right. and enhanced because of this energy available at this point in time. It's just a matter of tapping into it, understanding it's available, tapping into it, making use of it. But for any kind of creative expression or any endeavor you're going to consider, uh, now's a good time. It would be a helpful time to get, in, get into it. All right, excellent. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. No Thanks, problem. Jay. It's going to be one more. All right, one more call. Line three, you're on the air. Hey. I, I was wondering if you guys ever read the book uh, Rebirth and Realization uh, by no, James Conner. Who's the author? James Conner. Not familiar with it. Uh, uh, well, it tells a little bit about, like, waking up and realizing that we're all one, mm -hmm. and uh, we do have to live in this world with uh, midgets. And uh, those small, funny-looking bastards will always be around. <laughs> you know, I love this AP. This guy, this guy is moving up the list, man. <laughs> this he guy, he's it? moving he up the list. Out, you know, his no, I'm telling you because he has stayed with the thread. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, that's stick, what huh? makes a really good prank caller. <laughs> he's fast moving up but the I list. I think he's kind of setting his sights on the small things, you know what I mean? To get to the bigger, <laughs> bigger picture. Oh, man. Okay. I do uh, want to say one thing about, about, quick, quick, about, re seconds. about religion, is that everyone does have their own religion. Even if you subscribe to a religion, if you call yourself a Christian, an agnostic, an atheist, uh, a, a Buddhist, you sort. all have, everyone has their own religion because they ascribe different qualities and different ideas to different subjects. Okay. Hey, so. thanks you guys. I really appreciate that. Hey. Jeff, Chris, hey. I really appreciate that. I just want to say, don't welcome. follow any religion where anybody tells you what to do. Yeah. yeah that's trust not yourself. a religion at all. Trust that's, a, that's a cult or dogma. Exactly. Yeah, so thanks a lot, you guys. Thanks to my producer, Chris, for commanding the helm of the Starship Esoterica. I'd just uh, like to thank everybody for taking the opportunity to view. Uh, thanks, Austin. Really appreciate it. And we'll catch up with you soon. Thanks a lot. Have a good evening. Take care. Thanks, Austin.